Welcome back, Essex County College family. This is the Virtual Cafe, presented by Student Life and Activities. We hope you and your family are staying cool and safe during this time. Because remember, in addition to a global pandemic and an ongoing national human rights movement, it is hot outside. So please stay near the air conditioner if you can. Keep your place cool. We'll be here virtually for the next eight weeks for July and August, summer two semester. And we'll have our special guest, Dr. Robert Spellman, with us every Tuesday. And then Student Life staff on Wednesdays. So don't forget to tune in. We thank you for doing so today. Without further ado, let's say hi to our special guest, Dr. Spellman. How are you today, sir? Good morning. How are you doing, Joe? Good to be with you again. Well, we thank you for joining us, as always. Now, today we're going to be getting into goal setting. It's one of Dr. Spellman's most prized presentations that he does. We've had him do it at a bunch of new student orientations over the years. And we wanted to make sure that we archive it for you digitally on YouTube so you can always go back and watch this presentation whenever you need to. Dr. Spellman, take it away. What a pleasure it is to be uh, with you one more time and to be a part of the student life program. The academic and the student life program, there's no separation because at Essex, as we say, our stu students are first, your foremost and your most important. I've been um, working with previous lessons on goal setting, but this one is particularly important. And I almost suggest that you, as you look at this on YouTube, that you always keep it aside where you can play it over and over again, because this old teacher here, he doesn't know much, but we know something that can help you. And right now, we want to help you. We are under terrible pressures, pressures right now. There are financial pressures there, this virus that's out there. There are people who are out of work. There are people and parents who don't know whether we're going to go back to school or go to school. It looks like it might. we might not open schools again. So we want you to be prepared mentally and spiritually, we want you, and when I say spiritual, I'm not talking about religion. Now. I'm talking about you and how you feel about yourself and how you are motivated. Because uh, there's an old story in the Bible about there was a famine in the city, and these two guys were outside the city, three of them, and somebody said, somebody said, why sit ye here and die? Let us go into the city and find out what really is going on. They went into the city and they found that the enemy had left treasures and for them to get started all over again. That's what I'm saying. You can't listen to all these uh, pessimistic reports. You got to look forward because there are a lot of people waiting and behind you, your relatives, your children, uh, people that you who you know. And because of the way you respond, because of your success, uh, they're going to come forward and they are going to be successful. So let's go uh, to uh, this subject that I just love uh, to talk about, uh, goal setting. And goal setting is a system of motivation and personal leadership. You lead yourself personal motivation. You lead yourself. You don't need someone to pull you uh, by your uh, by a rain or anything. Your goals kind of lead you where you want to go, and you develop a system. And if you follow this old professor's rules, and especially when you make an action plan, you will be successful in anything that you do. You see, you belong to a family where Students are first and foremost in anything we do at Essex County College. And right now, a lot of your parents are out there. You don't know what you're going to do for the fall. And then we have high school 
uh, graduates who were planning to go to a four-year college, live on a campus and what have you. And all of a sudden, that's been kind of blown up in terms of costs or closing, so all kinds of things. And I really believe that they're going to come up with a vaccine and we're going to pull out of this. But for right now, what do you do? And my advice to many of you out there, that you don't lose time. At Essex County College, not only are we a fully accredited college by the Middle States Association, but we can give you the program or beginning programs that you can transfer to that school and never lose time. In other words, uh, you will not lose time from your four-year education. So we want to make sure you call our admissions office, talk to people, and register online. Take yourself. You see, you're familiar with it. You've been using all kinds of, uh, um, we've been using Zoom, and we've been using other types of online teaching programs. So you are well aware of what you need to have. And so that makes you acclimated and able to go through courses at Essex uh, without any difficulty. Essex County College, founded in 1966, after the Newark riots, and a woman I told you before, Mrs. Burt, insisted that it be in Newark rather than they wanted to put it in Verona. And what an opportunity center it has been for our community. So I call it the greatest opportunity center in this community because when you come to Essex and you leave Essex, you have something to take, you have something to earn with, and then you are a stronger, much more equipped person. It's an, it's an institution that's really dedicated to you. Everything is built around serving you and all kinds of exciting things you will learn but you, most of your learning, you will learn it outside the campus or outside the classroom. But oh, we become the impetus. We become the motivator. We become the person that tells you where to go, where this learning will take place. And after 50 years, we have a record of success that has millions of students behind it. So we are glad to serve you. And we want to talk about this business of goal setting being an achiever. People who achieve have goals. They asked the candidate who is the current president right now of the United States, they said, what are you going to do for your second term if you are elected? And he could not answer the question. And as a result, he kind of drags along. Whereas if you go to other people, they'll tell you, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So I'm supposed to be an old professor, but I tell you, if I had another 50 years, I could fill up every day with new things. So the question is, who are you? You've got to know who you are. I'm telling you, it's very important. Yes, I know we're not, none of us are perfect, but you can't just take the, the negative sides of us. Maybe you hold grudges. Maybe you do things like that. But there's a positive side of you that we believe in, that you can do anything, that you're as smart as anybody else, that you have a genius and a talent that's greater than anyone would think, and even more so than yourself. But you've got to know that. So who are you? How do you view yourself? Uh, you see yourself as a strong person? Do you see your future out there? Or you just go from what we say, go from paycheck to paycheck. That's the person without goals, just goals and pays bills, pays the rent, pays the car. But you got to have goals. And sometimes those goals cause you to go after a second job or do something of that nature. And then you got to see yourself five to 10 years from now. Where will you be? five or 10 years from now? Where will your children be behind you five or 10 years from now? And then if I make bad judgments or made bad judgments, I want you to be encouraged. We have students who come out of incarceration, but I always tell them yesterday 
is gone. Today is the first day. So success, the first step in really reaching goals or setting goals is turning what we would call the invisible into the visible, to see things that you want to do. And you develop that goal, but it has to have a destination. See, the road is there. Essex is there. The road to success and many careers is there. But now all we have to do is you have to get on that road and be successful in goal setting. But every goal, you can't take a whole lifetime uh, to fulfill certain goals. Some are long term, but you got to have a timetable. When will you get your college degree? When will you graduate from Essex? When will you achieve? And some of you want to go into nursing. How will you pass that exam? What are the deadlines that you'll be confronted with? And I showed you this chart once before. But you have to confront life head on, but you got to confront it with something. Go right down to the bottom of this chart. There's no excuse and there's no way you're going to navigate without knowing how to read and write. So that, that emphasis is very important. Thinking, communicating, uh, com, um, computation, uh, perception, persistence. And I'm going to talk about technology. But that reading and writing skill, and sometimes the technology can help your reading and writing skills. There's a program we call Grammarly. I recommend that for every every writer. Anyone has to write because not only does it check your spelling, but it suggests maybe that's the wrong word to use. Maybe you should use it this way. Maybe you should use that word. And it improves your writing. Remember, Grammarly, every student ought to have that. So once you know how to read, you start organizing yourself and you start looking at yourself and getting yourself geared toward the future. And then you develop a philosophy of life, a philosophy of education. I have a philosophy of education. It's the wherewithal to confront anything that you have to face uh, with logic, uh, with a method, and with judgment. So uh, you got to have that determination and drive. So many people have made it because they put that drive on. They didn't do it as well. They made mistakes. They didn't perfect it, but they kept going. And as a result, they became experts. And students, I'm here to tell you, it is impossible. We're in an age right now for you not to have what we call acu um, computer acumen. Acumen is expertise. Your skills with a computer. You must, yes, your phone, your iPhone is important. Your laptop or your desktop. But if you have to invest, you look at all the money you spend in pizzas and everything else, but you really want, and I'm, I'm not making fun of you, pizzas are good. But my point is, it's your priority. You should own a computer. A computer to you is almost like owning a suit or an overcoat in the winter. You have to have it. You have to have exposure to online. Sometimes, you can't afford it in your home, but you can go to Starbucks or many places that have online services and you can get online. And you can go out on Route 20. There's a place called Compu uh, Sales uh, on Route 20 near Patterson. You can get an iPad, a used one, for $30. But the college has invested in many computers around the campus. But if you can't, you need to look into uh, really improved or enhance used computers. And uh, Staples and all those people have them on sale and what have you. But students, you've got to have a computer. And you have to be able to, what we call keyboard. We used to call it typing. But you got to be able to keyboard. And you keyboard not by hunting and pecking, but you know, and while you're thinking, your fingers can move along. It's almost like people playing the piano. They look at music, and after a while, you'll get used to it. And there's a very simple program put out by a, a black woman, 
many years ago. Her name is Mavis Bacon. And she has different uh, ways in which she will teach you how to type and at a per minute rate. So therefore, if you go and you um, get that, you can get it at Staples. But let's go on here. Then we have other things that inspire us to develop goals. Now you've got to take a look at you, as I said before. What are those things that you do well? What are some skills and talents that you're really good at? Do you like to cook? Are you one at fixing things? Are you good with your hands? Or do you like to paint? Do you like to draw? But somewhere out there, uh, you need to discover within yourself. And sometimes it's a key to where you want to go in your career development. It's, it's a good thing, and you can tell by my voice, I enjoy what I do. And I asked my students, I said, you can tell I enjoy what I do. And they always respond in the positive. So look at what you do better than anyone else. You just have a, a gift for that. Look at the things you like to do. Do you like working inside? Do you like working outside? Can you sit behind a computer eight hours a day? Or once you be outside, I know someone had a, a computer degree and they wanted to be outside there in Canada now, they're uh, what we call one of the policemen ride the horse, but they wanted to be outside. You make a lot of money as a construction worker, but when it gets cold, you better know. You can't tell the boss it's too cold to work today. But I have a friend who's working on LaGuardia Airport right now, and he went from the day shift to the night shift, and he went from $1,100 a day to $1,500 a day just by taking the night get $1,500 a day. Now, yes, LaGuardia is five years from being completed, but wow, he makes it. He's tired. He has one of those machines that shakes him up, but it's what he's doing. He's doing it well. You got to have heroes, students. Look on television right now. There's so many. Eddie Gow, uh, people, writers, uh, very bright people, business people, people who have made it in business, people who have made it in engineering, people who have made it in academia. And you're just as smart as any of them. You are sharp and creative and talented, and many times much more. And the difference is uh, you, a person who uh, is lazy, uh, I may be the smartest person in the world, but they won't achieve people who have a goal and they have the energy. And you have to have people in your life. Sometimes it's your own father or your mother. Sometimes it's a faculty member. Sometimes it's a pastor. Sometimes it's another relative. But I have people in my life that I reflect on and I, I figure what they would do. And it still inspires me. They, many of them have been gone and passed on for many years, but they're inspiration still stays with me. So inspirations help us to develop goals. Uh, inspiration, that's you right there over there on the left. Uh, you, you, you assessing yourself, your costs, your obstacles that you're gonna come. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. I'm moving fast, but it's important. And then have you ever written a book? Have you ever written a poem? Have you ever painted a picture? See, I'm challenging you now to do things you may never have done. Have you ever uh, done a creative recipe? Have you ever tried cooking? And there's enough, enough with YouTube. If you want to learn how to make the most delicious salmon, that's how I did it. You go on YouTube, and they give it to, to you step by step. And there are millions of these 8 to 12-minute films that are what we call the how-tos. Have you ever written a short story? Have you ever written a song? See, these are things that you need to recognize your own talent and creative potential because your mind, you have the power within you to achieve and to go wherever you need to go. So what is a goal? We said before, a goal is a desired result to purchase a house, complete college, to own a business, 
to promote a position, to make history. Some people want to make history. Some people want to break a record. And then there's some people who just want to contribute to other people. And a lot of people make mistakes with goals because they have too many of them, number one, or they have them it's too large. If I want a car and need a car, I'm not going to go out and make a Rolls Royce my goal because all I need is a car. So therefore, uh, I have to be realistic. I have to be specific. And I should write it down. You should write your goals down. And when you write it down, uh, it's, it's a dream. But when you write it down, it becomes a little more valuable. When you go get pictures of it, if you want a ranch house or you want a colonial house or you want a farm, you get a picture of it. And right by your desk, you are able to see where you're going in a more realistic way. So after the dream becomes a goal, then you have to have the biggest part of that goal setting. And that is what we call the action plan. And my friend, Professor Carlos Rivera, who's sitting in our class this morning, he'll tell you he's a businessman. He's a goal setter. He's one that looks at goals and measurable goals and attainable goals. And I enjoy working with, but you gotta have what we call an action plan. And there are many people who have uh, goals that, um, simple goals. And some people wanna quit smoking. Some people want to uh, lose weight. Some people wanna uh, save money. Uh, other people want to just enjoy life. We see people out on the beaches today. Uh, others want to get fit. Others want to uh, find a new job. All right, these are goals. But you start by writing them down. And then you find out where to go and get help. And at Essex, students are first. So we uh, advocate that you become not what we call an island learner. When you take a course, you're gonna have two or three people in the class that become a part of your network. That's how they do it in the European institutions, in the institutions in the Middle East, they become a network. A good picture I advise you to see is still, you can go and rent it or you can buy it. It's John Hausman, it's called The Paper Chase. And at the end, they're all in a room and they have all these little pieces of paper, but they are back and forth. And as a network, each one, each one knows what the other one knows. I remember the late uh, Vern Patrick, uh, he was taking and going for an MBA at Fairleigh Dickinson. And there were five on that team. They'd come in at night and they would have a cup of coffee and maybe something to eat, but they would work together. And every one of those people, got through that MBA program. Networking, in other words, taking someone's from what is your comparison of this and what is your thinking on that? And you might even go and well, get sophisticated if your friend has a, has a computer, you might, since, since Zoom is free, you, you can exchange and talk to each other and look at each other's papers and homework right on the screen. You're doing it in class, why can't you do it uh, in your study. Tutorial centers. Essex has a lot. We have one in math. We have the student tutors. And then those digital tutorials. Students, there's nothing like Google. Just think and try me. Challenge me. Think of anything that you want to know and just type it in and watch Google give you back. Not only an explanation of what it is, but in the images column, you can click on what it looks like, have pictures of it. Some of these pictures I have here, I click on it for Google purposes. And a picture really is worth a thousand words. I talked about the study teams, the tutorial centers. Now, if you go to Khan Academy, that's the great, they have 5,000 uh, tutorials, digital tutorials, but particularly in math, about 4,000 of them from arithmetic all the way through calculus. So when you get your textbook, you need to go and look at the headings that you're working with 
and go to Khan Academy, and it will show you. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is everything you're going to learn in college, you don't learn by because you're in a classroom with a professor. You learn by self-discovery so that when you go to Khan Academy and you work through those programs, it could be fractions, it could be word problems, then it will show you how to do it, and then you have what we call it as an attack skill. Dogpile.com is like Google, but it's much more academic. Dogpile.com. And then, of course, there's YouTube, all the how-tos, how to do anything. Uh, my own son, we were going to fix a refrigerator. Man told me it cost $430 for him just to look at it. My son said, Dad, something's wrong here. So he went and looked at the model, and he got the, the uh, troubleshooting. And they told him what part might be wrong. It's causing a leak. And he went for $16. We bought the part. And he came back, and he, he, lay, he would lay on his back and put the YouTube tape on there. And it took him one, two, three, and we never had any leaks. In other words, students, you discover yourself the wherewithal to find what you need to know, when you need to know it, and when you need to use it. So in goal setting, it has to be specific, attainable, measurable, relevant, and you gotta have a timetable. And you go up a step, you set the goal, you make the plan, then you do the work and you stick to it and you will reach that goal, but you must believe in yourself. You gotta have faith in yourself. You'll make it every time to the top when you believe in yourself. And there are very few goals without obstacles. Uh, that, those, the Doberman you see there, I don't know how you're going to get around it, but if I told you that's your car and you can own it, you can drive home, you still have to get past there. So it brings to mind, you're not handcuffed. You don't give up. You got to figure out how you're going to do it. And that's where you, so, so doubt can hurt you if you don't see it as an obstacle, fear obstacles, lack of self-confidence. I can't do it. You can do it. Criticism. Some people criticize you, but any person that's doing anything good will be criticized. And uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have to fight antagonism and jealousy. And the biggest one is discouragement. People will try to, to push you down or create or uh, put obstacles in your way, icebergs that you don't see but you gotta keep moving. You gotta go to your career, whether it's professional goal, whether it's a material goal, financial goal, educational goal, or satisfaction goal. At our church, we have a, uh, we had to terminate because of the city and we're gonna go back to it, but we, we feed the homeless, altruistic goals, goals which help others. So here's the meat of goal setting. You have to have what we call a targeted action plan. A goal without an action plan is nothing but a wish. <laughs> and you can hear people sometimes, I'm going to travel. Well, I'm going to do this. Well, 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 how will you do it? I taught my daughter when the fellas come say, I want to go to medical school. Well, follow up, see what their action plan is. Which medical school? What are you going to major in? And if they can't answer it, she knows that they just it's just a bag of wind. So every goal has to be uh, dealt with, with your energy, but also that you're going to have some obstacles and you've got to stay focused and resolved. I would come back from my classes at New York University when I was working on my uh, doctorate and the, and the tracks on the... Um, um, train as that was coming in the north would freeze and we'd have to sit there for four hours uh i mean many times just for them to to unfreeze those tracks so we could get into north and so yesterday however whatever you had is gone you, today is the very first day of the rest of your life and you got to see that opportunity now you can't look back you may be, have been incarcerated, but that's gone behind you. 
And when you were incarceration, you were you become stronger. You know how to you know what tough times are all about. So it's an old saying: you will always miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So don't take a shot. Take that shot while you have that opening. In other words, in basketball, uh, you know that rule. And I love the salmon who have to get back to their uh, birthplace in order for them to hatch their eggs again for the new crop of salmon. So they go all the way out into the ocean, but they have to come back and sometimes they're coming against the tide, against the enemies that are out there to get them, against high uh, areas, but they're gonna make it and they get back no matter what. So what are the facts? A goal without an action plan is nothing but a wish. A goal with little or no personal commitment probably will never be achieved. And most goals have obstacles. So uh, my grandfather, this used to be one of his favorite quotes. He who neglects the dream within commits the most unpardonable sin against himself. In other words, don't get to be an old man or an old woman and say, I should have done. You have to do it while you can. And most of you, you have your youth, which is a part of your wealth. You have your health, which is a part of your wealth. You have your mental creative faculties, which are a part of your wealth. All wealth is not determined by how much money you have. Wealth uh, has to do with many things other than that. So sometimes time is going to be an obstacle. Sometimes money is going to be an obstacle. Sometimes you got to take care of the responsibilities. Look at all of you parents out there right now. You don't know what we're going to do. You, know, you had to stop work in order for to take care of the kids because of a school closing. But now we're working on Essex in what we call a home school, home schooling. And we want to get a program whereby uh, companies will buy a computer and train the parents. We will train in what we call home schooling. You know, people who have uh, physical handicaps, and yet they overcome them. I saw a girl from Harvard, uh, graduated uh, from black girl from Harvard uh, uh, Law School, who, was, who could not hear. She was deaf and blind, but she did it. I, I, I shed a tear when I saw that. I mean, she overcame those uh physical handicaps and sometimes people with handicaps are stronger we had a guy i grew up with in the boys club and he only had one arm but he could outswim all of us so people will do it then you're gonna have i'm be honest with you if you don't already know it people who oppose you they get jealous of you they want to do what you're doing but they don't want to put in the energy but you have to anticipate them and then you got to see it as something to go around, something that's going to go around. So you got to go around these dolemen, that doubt, that fear, that money, those time. You got to figure out how you're going to do it. Set up with a plan. Identify the obstacles and then look at your own confidence. Don't worry about criticism and antagonism and discouragement. So you got to keep going. That's what perseverance is. Keep going, keep going. If you're gonna go and start, you might as well go all the way. So here's this centerpiece as I move to conclusion of this session, but it's very important, the action plan. The centerpiece of goal achievement, the action plan. What will you do? Not just a wish. And I like to compare it like, you're preparing for a trip. What do you have to establish when you're going on a trip? One, the destination. Two, how are you going to get there? Three, how long will it take me to get there? Four, what, what do I need to make the trip? I can't be going to California on five gallons of gas. How many gallons will I need? What are some obstacles if I run into the way I want to go, that I can go around, roadblocks, 
And what are those road signs that let me know I'm getting closer? If you go into Chicago, you'll see signs. Chicago, 400 miles. Chicago, 300 miles. Chicago, 200. So what are those things? And so simply stated, and if you think this way, students, you will always be successful. You answer these questions each time. Who? What? When? Where? How? How much? And what do you need to achieve it? I teach a simple thing like uh, my students who are in computer graphics, when they teach and we learn something about um, we learned something about uh, making a flyer. There's certain information that belongs on there. It belongs on there. And so you have to deal with who? You have to deal with what? In other words, who's sponsoring a, a sale? What is it? A sale of a car. When are you going to do it? You got to put a date on it. Where is it going to be held? How and how much is it going to cost to register? And of course, you know the elements to achieve it. So in my conclusion, here it is, an action plan. You've got to write down your goals. It's got to be clear. It can't be fuzzy. I want to travel. That's fuzzy. Where do you want to travel? OK, I want to go. Uh, to Washington, D.C. at the museum, a new museum for African-American, um, the um, museum that's there, and we want to visit certain exhibits. You come up with that specific. Uh, how are we going to get there? Well, we have to have a ticket. We're going to do it by train. We're going to drive. We're going to fly. You can't walk. So usually you take a train. And when are you going to get there? And when are you coming back? And then how important is it? And certain things are very important, students. In other words, you need to expose yourself to experiences. You need to look at the calendar for the Javits Center, for an example. They have the car show. They have the boat show. They have the flower show. They have the interior design show. They have the arts show. And sometimes 10 bucks to get in it. Better watch on the parking, though. You better park where you don't get towed away. But the point is, every time you get expose yourself to a new experience, you're adding on to you. And so how does that go fit with other things you want to do? I mean, have, have you ever gone camping before? Have you ever gone up in the Poconos? Have you ever? And these are questions that are within you right now, 78. You go down 78 toward uh, Pennsylvania and you go to exit 15, there's a little town there uh, that uh, has a mill. It has a one room schoolhouse. It looked like it did in colonial times and it's free, see? So many times in the parks, they have concerts. And when I was courting and coming up, I didn't have any money. I'd take the girl to the outside, you know, uh, concert, summer concert outside. <laughs> or I'd go to the sidewalk art exhibit. <laughs> you have to pay. <laughs> and I would maybe take it to a nice restaurant or so. But this life is a series of experiences that you need to add to yourself. You need to. So state the goal in writing. Then put a timetable on it. When are you going to have it done? Then you go through what we call your action steps. What are the sequential things that I have to do in order to achieve that goal? And I work backwards, particularly with the timetable. If I want to graduate from Essex in 2021, then I have to work back from May 2021 back to today. What are those things in between that I have to do? What is my priority? What are some of the obstacles I may run into? And what are the tools for measurement? And when you walk across that platform, and see, you have to use pictures. Go cut yourself. If, if there's a certain car you want, cut out a picture of that car. Put it right on your desk. If there's a certain furniture setting you want, cut out a picture of that. Put it, and you begin to see your goals in realism. 
and that's so important. So the key to obstacle removal is your action strategy around them. If you're confronted with a log across the road, you don't stop. You figure out how you're going to go around it. What is it that's blocking my way? What is this barrier? What is this hurdle? What is this stumbling block in front of me? And how am I going to come? What's the key to overcoming it? Last but not least, and I appreciate your patience, but as I said, most goals have obstacles. You might as well, when you make your goal, kind of anticipate that something's going to get in the way. Time, money, responsibilities, sometimes physical handicaps, people opposers, and I reiterate that. But you have that determination. Look at this guy's face. Boy, he's going to make it no matter what. He keep going, keep climbing, keep moving. And I used this illustration before. In India, when the elephant is born, uh, a little baby, they take a great big chain and put him up and tie him to a great big uh, building. And uh, then when he's large, big, able to pull down anything, they take a little flimsy rope and put on his leg at night, he stays right there. Why? Because in his head, he still thinks he has a chain. And what I'm trying to tell you is that you have the power to break that chain. Anything that holds you back, you have the power to break it through. And just like the elephants, you have the power to break that wall down. You have the power to get things out of your way. And so I congratulate you. Keep going toward your goals. Always know where you are, but keep going in a direction. Having a goal, having obstacles, having a determination. And it's like I told you once before, it's not the way the wind is blowing. You talk to someone who does sailing. It's not the way the wind is blowing, but how you set your sail. Have that goal, have that target, aim at it, and go after the next thing you will find yourself uh, overcoming. There's no such thing as a closed door. You keep moving, you keep going, uh, you stand up to obstacles, and you're gonna make it through every time. So, uh, Joe, it's my pleasure. Once again, covered a lot, but any student who looks at this, you will see an old man who wound up and enthusiastic. And if I was uh, blessed to have another 20 years, I could fill it up with all kinds of exciting things that I want to do. And I, I grew up in Newark, poor. We didn't even know we were poor, but I've had some experiences. We went to Africa, been to uh, Israel 31 times. I've been all over the uh, Europe and I had a chance to travel uh, to Hawaii and the East. And uh, it's just been fascinating that you have richness in your life that goes beyond money. And if you in your head know how to read or you read, uh, even get audio books, go out to Barnes and Noble, one of my pastimes, Go out to Barnes and Noble, just thumb through magazines, just thumb through books, and have, have a coffee, a cappuccino, and sometimes put all the books back except maybe one or two, and I'll buy one. But that's a good pastime. It's a learning pastime. So I appreciate you. Don't run into a shipwreck. Stay away from the icebergs and keep going. I'd like to hear from my friend. Professor Rivera, one of my revered colleagues, person dedicated to learning. You know, every time I have the opportunity to listen to your presentations, Dr. Spellman, um, it just reinforces my own desire to, to, to accomplish and do things. Uh, you're an inspiration to anyone that knows you, to anyone that, that hears you. Um, Today's presentation, I found uh, 
as you were speaking, Dr. Spellman, you know, thinking about the fact that you were really emphasizing the importance of a person's beliefs. You know, what, what does a person think about? What do they think about in terms of themselves? And what I, what I got out of it today was the, the importance of reflection. How our students, all, all of us as individuals, we have to reflect on what we actually believe. And we have to also kind of analyze what our beliefs are. Because many of our students are full of false beliefs. They, 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 are, they, they have these negative thoughts about their own future, their own path. And as I tell my students, uh, whether I'm in the classroom or speaking to them, we must reflect and eliminate these false thinking because there's no room for positive thoughts if your brain is full of false thoughts, false beliefs. So what I got today was the fact that we need to understand what these intangibles are that, that motivate behavior. And we have to examine those intangibles and ensure to ourselves that we're not, we are not recording a false narrative that then influences our behavior. We need to be empowered, as you indicated today, to do positive things. And how do you do that? Exactly what you described, by setting these goals, by having a vision about yourself. And then that vision will give birth to these goals. And these goals are gonna give birth to these plans, which then will influence your behavior and will influence your intentions. So I thank you so much Dr. Spellman, for this presentation. And by the way, your PowerPoints were fantastic. Uh, I mean, your media presentation is second, is second to none. So again, I look forward to seeing you on campus. And I certainly thank you very much for, for doing this for our students. And Joseph, we haven't had a chance to meet yet, but I do look forward to meeting you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you all for tuning in to the virtual cafe. We'll be back here tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. And we'll be here every Tuesday and Wednesday in July and August for the summer two semester. We hope that you and your family are doing well during this time. Please stay cool, stay safe, let your voice be heard. Take care.